everybody and welcome to another Florida Friendly Landscaping Educational Program on this beautiful day at the end of May. It's getting pretty hot out there and I know people are concerned. We had some good rains over the weekend, especially for May, but this is normally our hot dry times. And here at Hernando County um, Utilities, May is the month that we pull the most water, that people use the most water. So I am Lily Browning. I do work for Hernando County Utilities. I'm the Florida Friendly Landscaping Program Coordinator. And I thought uh, May would be a great time to explore our irrigation systems for those who have them. So therefore, I went to my friend, Dr. Lester here and said, can you teach that great class that you teach on irrigation systems? Because you know, you always know your strengths. <laughs> and when maybe there's someone who's stronger in an area for you, you go to them. So I'm gonna let Dr. Lester take over from here and talk about Irrigation 101 for homeowners. Welcome, Dr. Lester. Hey, great. Thank you so much, Lily. And good morning, everyone. Uh, I assume that you can see my PowerPoint and screen. Okay. Absolutely. It's beautiful. Okay, yes. great. So we're going to talk a little bit about your irrigation system. And this is for people who have an in-ground irrigation system. But we're going to talk a little bit about micro irrigation also. I'm not going to go into so much the mechanical specifics of it, but we'll kind of touch on that also. So this is kind of a overview of your irrigation system that maybe either you bought a house in Hernando County and your house came with one, or you're thinking about putting one in. So we're going to cover a little bit about micro irrigation also, which is a great way to um, maintain your plants and save water. We're going to talk a little bit about how to inspect and maintain your irrigation heads and the importance of doing that on a very regular basis, how to operate an irrigation controller, although keep in mind all the different brands and styles are all very different. We're gonna talk about rain sensors. If you have no idea what a rain sensor is, you will by the time we're done. How to adjust those irrigation heads, how to calibrate and check your irrigation system and why all these different points are all very important. So there are a huge number of resources out there. And for anybody watching this who maybe has purchased a house recently, or maybe you've been there for a while and you have an irrigation system, or you're not really sure if you do or not, but if you go in your garage, there's this mysterious box on the wall and you're not really sure how to set it, operate it. Maybe you don't even know if it's working or not. There's a lot of resources out there to help you figure it out. If you look on the box and see the name of the company on there, and it's probably gonna be Hunter, Rainbird, Toro, Orbit, these are all companies that make the irrigation controllers. And you go to their website. If you know the manufacturer and the model number, you can 99 times out of 100 download the uh, direction book. And the direction book, even if you're, you bought the house and the direction book has long been lost, you can download that and it's going to tell you everything you need to know, how to check to see if it's operating, how to set it. A lot of these newer systems are very, very complicated. You can set a number of different um, uh, ways and, and cycles, and you can have your spring cycle and summer cycle and winter cycle. They can get very complicated, so you're gonna want the directions to be able to set them, and they're all different. I can't go into a presentation and explain all of them because chances are you might have a brand or a model that's maybe a little bit older, that operates very differently. But if you know who the manufacturer is, there's a lot of good information out there. All these different companies, um, I believe most of them have a lot of videos and tutorials on their website also. So that's a really good source of practical help. So I'm not sure if everybody here knows this or not, but the last number that I heard, and this applies to Hernando County, that about 60% of the water that Hernando County Utilities cleans and sends out through the great big pipes to all of us goes towards outdoor irrigation. Yes, that's so, correct. To my knowledge, yes, that is still a correct number. 60% is a huge percentage of all the clean, potable, drinkable water 
that the utilities company sends out and we take it and we just water our lawns, our plants, our outdoor uh, plantings with. And you may need to do this. And you can have a vegetable garden, a flower garden, a palm tree, a rose bush, and it's not going to take a huge amount of water. What really kind of burns through and racks up the water is when people irrigate their entire yard and their irrigation system is not in proper working order. You can start wasting huge amounts of water that's not going towards your plants or exactly where you want it to go and use 60% or more. And sometimes this results in very, very expensive water bills. Lily and I have been asked to go out and look at people's yards before because they'll call the utilities department and go, oh my gosh, my water bill is through the roof. What is wrong? And they'll check to see if there's a broken pipe or a broken box and there isn't. And we go out and look at it and it turns out that there's some kind of terrible problem with the irrigation system that's resulting in huge bills. And we don't wanna see that happen to anybody. In Hernando County and a lot of the other parts of Florida, 100% of our drinking water comes from the aquifers, which is from underground. So we don't get our water from a reservoir or a river or a huge lake like other parts of the country do. All of ours comes from the Floridan aquifer, which is underground. And the average Florida resident uses about 150 gallons per day. If you irrigate your yard, your usage per person in your house doubles. It either doubles or goes up by even more. So outdoor irrigation can go through a lot of water if you're not careful. So very important that if you have an outdoor irrigation system here in Hernando County, we are on one day per week watering. So you can only run your system or have it set to run one day per week. But let's say, for example, I believe my day to water is Wednesday. So we'll use that as, as an example. So I can water my yard on Wednesday. And it, let's say it rains really hard all day long on Tuesday. I probably don't need to water it that Wednesday. So you only want to water it on the day that you're allowed to, but only if you need to. And there are some ways that you can tell from looking at your lawn whether it's dry and needs to be watered or not. And if it doesn't need to be watered, go ahead and save the water and turn it off. Um, one way to tell that your lawn is dry and needs to be watered is it will start to wilt. And you can see kind of clearly in the center of this picture here, the grass blade, which is normally flat, is starting to curl. So when turf grass gets very dry, the blades will curl because it's trying to conserve water loss. So that's one indication that your lawn is dry and might need to be irrigated that week. Another way to tell is obviously it starts to turn tan or brown. And if you look closely, you can kind of tell that these grass blades in this picture are starting to curl. So this lawn is looking pretty dry. If you go out there and walk through your yard and the grass doesn't spring back and you start actually leaving footsteps in the grass when you walk through it, that means it's very dry also. Uh, a well hydrated lawn, if you step on it, when you move your foot, the grass springs right back. You don't leave a footprint behind. And sometimes you might look at your yard and go, part of my yard looks really, really dry, like it needs to be watered, but there's another part that doesn't look as dry. What's going on? This is a good example right here of something that's wrong with the sprinkler head. So either the sprinkler head is plugged or blocked or broken, but the sprinkler head that would normally cover the section in the foreground of this picture where it's starting to look kind of tan and dry, something is wrong with it. Because if you look at the rest of the lawn, it looks just fine. It looks well watered. So very important that you learn how to go out there and tell the difference between my yard is dry this week, I need to water it, or I have some kind of problem with the irrigation system. So a question that we get a lot is people go, okay, well, how long do I set each zone to run for? How long do I water for? And we cannot give you a definite answer on that because it depends. Depends on a lot of different things. There are a lot of different systems. We have Hunter, we have Rainbird, we have Toro, we have Orbit. You have different types of sprinkler heads. You have the big rotator heads. These are the ones that pop up 
and spray over a big area of your lawn. And they have to run for a long time, sometimes as long as one hour to cover a big area and go back and forth to put down the correct amount of water. Other, the smaller sprinkler heads that just pop up and spray, they don't move, they just spray and keep spraying. They can put down the correct amount of water in as little as 15, 20 minutes. So it depends on a lot of things for how long you set the system for, but there are ways to check this. So different sprinkler heads require different run times. Ideally, you wanna avoid mixing those heads, the big heads that cover a large area and the pop-up spray heads. You don't wanna put them in the same zone. So if you're thinking about installing an irrigation system, keep that in mind. Chances are, if you have a house that comes with an existing sprinkler system, they mix the heads. They always do. New home construction is famous for mixing the big heads with the small heads. And the big one may have to run for 60 minutes to put down the right amount of water. Little ones should only run for 15 or 20 minutes. And now that's going to be a never ending problem. There is a way that you can go out there and actually test your system to see if you're putting down too little water or too much or just the right amount. And that's called the catch can test. And we'll show that in just a second. But when you do water your lawn, you want to aim to put down anywhere from one half to three quarters of an inch of water for each irrigation event. If you put down less than half an inch of water, it's not enough to actually benefit the grass and provide the grass and plants with enough water to keep them growing and healthy. If you put down anything more than three quarters of an inch, you're wasting water. And we're going to see exactly why you're wasting water. It goes to uh, the fact that most of us here in Hernando County have very, very sandy soil. And of course, you always want to follow the watering restrictions about what day you're watering on, because if Hernando County Code Enforcement catches you watering on the wrong day, you can get in trouble for that. So here's a picture of how you can use the catch can method. So what you do is you go into your garage and you turn your system on and you click on run zone one and you go outside and you find out exactly where zone one is. Maybe it's your front yard, your backyard, your side yard. And you need to save some little cans. These can be tuna cans, cat food cans, small container, rain gauges if you have access to a lot of them and you scatter them around the yard in that zone. And you go ahead and run the zone for the amount of time that is set to run. Let's say it's set to run for 40 minutes right now. And when it gets done running, you go out there with a little ruler and check in the cans to see how much water you applied. You can run the zone for 10 minutes and measure it and then do the math to right. figure and out. I was going to say, Dr. Lester, according to Hernando mm -hmm. County Municipal Code, you are given 10 minutes per zone to run tests. So you're going to have to do that math. <laughs> they don't want you running it longer than that. That can get a little tricky because sometimes 10 minutes, your system doesn't put out enough water to get an accurate reading in the can. We encountered that problem before. But if you run it for 15 or 20 minutes, it usually does. But regardless, if you go out there and you run the system for a little bit, you're going to catch water in the cans. And you can go out there with a ruler and measure and do the math to see if my system runs for the amount of time that it's set for, am I putting down the right amount of water or too much or too little? And this is a really good way to be checking those cans. Let's say one can over in the corner is totally dry. There's no water in it. So that tells you that maybe you have a problem with the sprinkler head. The head is broken, plugged, malfunctioning. Let's say you check another can and it has twice as much water in it as all the other cans do. Maybe there's a problem with how the system was designed or laid out. This gives you a really good indication of what is happening in your yard and whether your heads are all running correctly. And it gives you a good heads up about, do I need to dig a little bit deeper and start checking those heads? And obviously if you run the system, if you run just one zone and you stand there and you look at it, you're gonna see all the heads running correctly or not running correctly. That one's plugged. This one is pointed towards the wall of my house and not towards the lawn. I need to twist it and fix that. It's a really good way to test for, for a lot of different possible problems that you could have 
in your system. And we're going to talk a little bit more about the different problems that these heads and zones can have that you need to be checking for frequently because you would be amazed at just how quickly these heads can be, get broken and bumped and knocked out of whack and just how much um, tweaking and maintenance they require. So when it comes to our watering restrictions, like I mentioned a few times here in Hernando County, we are under once a week irrigation. If you're watching us from another county, you may be under different watering restrictions. So you need to check with your county's extension office or um, utilities department to find out exactly what your restrictions are. So here in Hernando County, it's once a week. You have to run your irrigation either before 8 a.m. or after 6 p.m. So not both, don't run it twice in one day, just run it once, but it has to run at night, basically. You can't be, even if my day is Wednesday, I can't go out there and start watering my yard at high noon because a lot of the water is going to evaporate before it hits the ground and soaks in. It's a very, very wasteful way of irrigating. All this depends on your address. And some HOAs may vary a little bit. We do have a few exemptions in certain neighborhoods where because of how the irrigation system is set up, they have to irrigate an entire street on Monday, the next street goes on Tuesday, the next one on Wednesday. So there's a few little exceptions to this, but 99% of us have to do it on what our allowed day is. And all of this is run through and regulated and um, planned out by Hernando County Utilities. So if you have any questions about this or you're confused at the end about exactly what day your day is, if you ask Lily, she's more than happy to help you out with this. So the reason why we recommend that people, every time you water, you only put down a half inch to three quarters of an inch is because if you have a very sandy soil, one inch of irrigation or rainfall or however that water gets there, one inch of water on your lawn is going to sink down 12 inches, one foot. Your grass roots don't go down one foot deep. This diagram here shows some of them going eight inches deep. Your grass roots don't go eight inches deep. Most lawns that we look at, the majority of the roots are in the top maybe four inches or so. So obviously, if you think it's really dry out there, and I don't think it's going to rain this coming week. So, you know, if I run my irrigation system on my allowed, allowed day and I put down four inches of water, I'm going to really soak the lawn, and now it's going to have plenty of water to last for a whole week. That's not how it works because the water is going to, one inch of water goes 12 inches deep. It's going to evaporate or infiltrate through the sand very quickly. And within a couple of days, all the water is gone. Whether you put down three quarters of an inch, whether you put down four inches, it's all gone. So the water in very sandy soil is only held temporarily. Um, this is good if you think about it. Uh, recently, we've had some really, really heavy rains. And I think one night we got four or five inches of rain here and my front yard flooded. The water piled up and got pretty deep. It stopped raining and 15 minutes later, boom, it was all gone because we have outstanding drainage here in Hernando County. Problem is your soil doesn't hold the water. So it's not, your grass is not going to hold it for very long. So this is why we recommend only a half to three quarters of an inch every time you water. Now during the winter and during cooler weather, this changes because cooler weather means less evaporation. Your grass is going to go through the water slower. And all the different turf grasses we have here in Central Florida are warm season grasses. They start to grow in the spring. They grow really well during the summer where it's sunny and warm. The days are long. We get a lot of rain. But what happens during the winter? Your grass goes dormant. It probably turns a little bit tan. You don't have to cut it nearly as often. So it's going to need a lot less water then. Normally during the winter, you can set your irrigation to run maybe every other week. A lot of people, if you have bahia grass, will just shut it off for several months during the winter and not water at all because your grass doesn't need the water. It's not using the water. And there's really no point to watering every week. No matter what you do, you can't force it to turn green and grow in the dead of winter. That's just 
how our turf grasses are. So when it comes to that little box that's on the wall in your garage, they can be complicated. And I think we all know with electronics nowadays, if you've purchased a new computer or a new cell phone, they're always adding new things. There are so many different, the new irrigation um, boxes are very good because you can program them to do just about everything. You can set your um, um, days and times and hours and everything for the, your summer program, for your winter program. The newer ones, I think you can set six different programs if you want. The problem is it gets kind of confusing. So there's no way that I could possibly cover uh, in this class or any other class how to operate each one. It's very, very important that you get the direction booklet for your model and for your brand and go through it. If you read the directions, generally they're pretty simple to do most of the basic things with it. It's not difficult, but there's a few things that you need to kind of keep in mind with your box. They all plug in, they all require electricity and they all have a little backup battery. This is because if your power goes out during an afternoon thunderstorm, it doesn't erase everything that you sat there and took the time to program in. And even if your power is off, it will still run when it's supposed to run and not run when it's not supposed to run. So you need to check that battery um, when you turn your clocks back, which I'm not even sure if we're gonna be doing anymore. So I guess we'll have to think up a new recommendation when you check the batteries in your um, smoke alarm in your house, check the batteries in your irrigation box because they need to be checked and replaced. Otherwise they die and your power goes off for five minutes during a thunderstorm. And now the timing on your box is all messed up and it resets and it starts running at high noon on the wrong day. We see that happen quite a bit when people don't check those batteries. Your irrigation system has um, you may have several zones. I've seen people with as many as 11 zones, so that can get kind of complicated. Your system has valves, and this is your box sends an electrical pulse to a valve to either open up, let the water run through, and now your sprinklers run, or it closes and the water shuts off and the sprinkler heads in that zone stop. Valves break. Valves can get damaged from lightning strikes in your yard or your neighbor's yard. That happened to me. Uh, sprinkler heads break. If you have a lawn service that cuts your yard, you probably have a gentleman that comes out and does that on a very, very large lawnmower. And maybe they drive through your yard very quickly and they're doing sharp turns. Those mowers break sprinkler heads frequently. You have a rain sensor. and We're going to talk about that in just a moment. Uh, very important that you know your zones. So you, you should know zone one is in the front yard, zone two is in the side, zone three and four, you're in the backyard. You need to become familiar with your system and know where your zones are and go out there and check it frequently and go through the zones and check those heads to make sure everything is running just right. And like I mentioned earlier, if you don't have the owner's manual, if you go online, and check with the manufacturer. They either have that information there and you just look it up and download a PDF and print it off. I've done that before. Or if you contact them, they're more than happy to help you out and get you that information. So rain sensor. A rain sensor is that strange looking little thing that if you have an irrigation system, if you walk around your house, you're gonna find it out there. It attaches to the edge of your roof and it's supposed to stand out there in the open. And when it rains, these little things get wet and it shuts your system off. This is why ideally your irrigation system will not run when it's pouring rain. Because that really makes no sense to run your spray clearance when it's raining. But I'm sure that all of us have been driving down the road in a pouring rain and you see people's sprinklers running is because the rain sensor is not working correctly. They break. They wear out. Sometimes they're not hooked up correctly. Sometimes the wires are broken. I've seen every problem imaginable with these things. Sometimes they're put in the wrong spot so that they're underneath your roof, the edge of your roof. So when it rains, they don't get wet. Obviously that's not gonna make them operate correctly. Other times they position them right above your um, 
air conditioning unit outside. So when the air conditioner runs, it dries it out very quickly and it's not doing, it's not operating the way it should. So ideally this, this little piece of equipment turns your system off either during a rainstorm or right after a rainstorm. So if it just poured rain for a couple of hours and your system is supposed to turn on that night, the little rain sensor is still soaking wet and will still turn off your system for that night because you don't need a water because it just rained. These things do need to be inspected. Um, it's usually best if you get a professional to come out and inspect it. Homeowners can do it also. Uh, University of Florida has a lot of good information online about how to go about checking them. There's a number of different systems, so they don't all necessarily look like this. This is the most commonly used one um, that you can pick up at a big box store or irrigation supply store or order it on Amazon. I'm sure they have it also. But you do need to inspect it to make sure that it's functioning properly. The Hernando County Utilities Department has always had a rain sensor rebate, and Lily can correct me on this if I'm about to say anything that's incorrect at the moment. They do, I see her turning back on, but they do have a rebate program so that if you need to get a new rain sensor installed, they'll help you out with the cost if you're a Hernando County Utilities Department customer and if you live in a different county, if you check with your utility department, they might have a program similar to this also because um, rain sensors are not very expensive, but still getting a rebate or getting it done for very close to free is definitely a bonus. Lily, do you have this program going on right now? Uh, yes, I updated the slide before I sent it back to you. Um, so, um, you know, there are rules and regulations. Um, it is a $55 credit on your water bill. Um, and you can't, it's not a continual thing. You only get it once, you know, in the life of that bill. Um, we have it going now until September 30th. Um, then the new budget year will start in the county and then we'll start it up again, probably, you know, November of 2022. Um, you do have to obviously be one of our customers in order to get this credit on your water bill. Your home and your irrigation system has to be older than 2010. And uh, this, just like our low flow toilet program, you do have to use one of the participating contractors uh, for the installation of this. And we have, we send out, we ask, you know, all the licensed people in the county to participate. Usually we get three or four. I think we have three right now. So, you know, the best thing, if you want to know about it, you, you had an insert in your bill, if you happen to have noticed it. <laughs> and if not, just email me and I'll be glad to send you the information for that as well. Okay, so if you're not sure whether your uh, rain sensor works or not, and you fit the qualifications here, reach out and contact Lily about that. Go ahead and contact her first before you call somebody and get it replaced. And maybe you'll qualify for the $55 rebate and be able to get a new rain sensor that you know works. And like I said, these rain sensors don't last for 20, 30 years. Many of them are only work correctly for maybe a year or two before they have to be replaced. And the other um, qualification is you have to be um, in charge of your own irrigation, your own landscape. It doesn't pertain to those who live in, you know, villas that may have that all taken care of for them because that that's a whole different program. So. Okay, we're going to go through some pictures here of some different issues and things you need to keep in mind with your uh, irrigation system in your yard. Like I mentioned earlier, we have basically two different types of heads that we see in um, uh, lawn irrigation systems. And there's a couple other kind of heads, at least one or two other ones I'm going to mention. But the two main ones are the, uh, the one on top here, the rotor head. And these are large heads that cover a large area. And they're going to have to run as a general rule for a long time. They're designed to have to run for a long time to cover the area that they're covering because they're covering a big area of lawn. And then you have the smaller pop-up spray heads like in the bottom picture here 
that don't move and they can put down, they put down fewer gallons per minute, but because they cover the area continuously, they'll put down the proper amount of water very quickly, whereas the larger ones are gonna take much longer to cover the same area. You want to design your irrigation system or ideally whoever put it in, whether it be the builder or the previous homeowner, put it in where you have head-to-head -head coverage. That's where you wanna design it, where each sprinkler head sprays all the way until it hits the next sprinkler head in the area. Because otherwise, you're gonna have one head covering area, another head covering area, and you're gonna have a dead zone in between them that never ever gets watered. And you're gonna walk out there and it's like, why do I have dead zones in my yard? It's because the um, sprinklers were improperly laid out. So there's a lot of information. There's a whole art and science to actually designing and laying out irrigation systems in any given yard, depending on the shape and the amount of turf grass, the amount of flower beds. There's a lot of planning that needs to go into that. So hopefully if you already have an irrigation system, it was planned correctly. But if it wasn't, you may have to go back and retrofit it a little bit and tweak it to get it working correctly. Of course, you want to avoid irrigating in the middle of the day because the spray heads, a lot of the, the water is put out in a fairly fine spray. And if you do it in the middle of the day on a sunny day, a lot will evaporate before it hits the ground. It hits the ground and it evaporates before it sinks in and gets to your grass roots. So it's just very, very wasteful. So very, very important. You need to inspect that system frequently. Like I mentioned, if you have a service or if you have a large lawnmower, these heads, they're plastic, they're delicate, they get bumped, they get knocked out of whack, they need to be re-aimed, they break. We see every irrigation system I've ever looked at has at least something wrong with it. One thing that very commonly happens is that sprinkler heads get broken. They just get snapped off. And in this picture here, if this person just had their irrigation set to run in the middle of the night when they're in bed asleep, they'd never know that this head was broken unless they went out there and actually ran through the system zone by zone, walked around, checked the heads, make sure they're not broken. And something like this is going to waste a huge amount of water. They're going to be wondering like, why is my water bill all of a sudden so high? And the area that that sprinkler head was supposed to cover is now not getting covered. So now they have a big dead spot in their yard and they're wondering why is my grass dying? And that fountain of water that goes up comes back down and it will tear up plants, it will tear up mulch, it uh, messes up flower beds, causes just a huge number of problems. And you would be surprised at just how easily it is to have a sprinkler head snap or break. Sometimes they just get old and worn out and burned up in the sun and they just snap. So if you're not out there checking on a frequent basis. The last house I lived in with the sprinkler system, I ran it and checked it every month. And every month I would find something wrong with it that I had to fix or replace. If you look at the sprinkler heads and you see either a puddle or fresh sand, or when you're running the system, you see water bubbling up from underneath the sprinkler head, that's a bad sign. That means that there's a pipe broken underground and that's fixable. I fixed them, but you have to get out there and you have to get on your hands and knees and dig a lot of sand out to find the broken pipe and then fix it. And if you're not confident in your handyman abilities, you probably want to contact a professional. It's not difficult for them, but this is something that isn't really readily noticeable because that sprinkler head may still be going off and watering, not at the force that it should be, but the pipe is broken underground and you're wasting a huge amount of water that way now also. If you go out there and start looking at your yard, there's telltale signs, there's dry spots, dry corners. This one here could be a disease. It could be physical damage. It could be chinch bugs, because this looks like St. Augustine. It could be a broken sprinkler head in the corner that's supposed to cover this area could be a lot of different things. So sometimes it's not really obvious what the problem is, but 
broken or improperly aimed sprinkler heads are very frequently the cause of lawn uh, problems like this. Here's a picture of somebody watering their yard. I think this is my boss, Jim Davis's yard, as a matter of fact. And sprinkler head is running, covering the area that should be covered, but it's going a little bit too far. So that head needs to be adjusted a little bit so it's not watering the driveway because watering the driveway is just wasteful. And this could have happened because when the law was being cut, the sprinkler head got bumped, knocked it out of whack. Those things need to be adjusted so that they're watering where you want them to water and not where you don't want them to water. Yes, right. ma'am. In Jim's defense, this is how he found his girlfriend's home before they got married and he fixed the situation. <laughs> so there you go. Yeah. And if you have not checked your heads in a very long time or you've never done it, I guarantee you, if you go out there and check them this afternoon, they're all going to be out of whack. These things get knocked off and it might just be a little bit of little adjustment is going to make a big difference in exactly where that water goes. So this is not unusual, but it's not difficult to correct either. Over time, your plants in your landscape are gonna grow. Your hedges, shrubs, things like that, they grow taller, they grow wider, and now sprinkler heads that were designed to pop up and cover a part of your lawn are being blocked or they're covered over by bushes. So you need to be aware of this and fix it. You need to either trim the bush back move the sprinkler head, make some kind of arrangements to cover what you want to cover without damaging your um, plantings or having your plantings block the sprinkler heads. So this is something that happens over time, over the years, and you're going to have to take some kind of action to correct that. Something that probably a lot of you might not be aware of is most of these sprinkler heads, if you take the head off, have a little strainer basket inside. And this will become dirty, it's designed to catch dirt and uh, chunks of grass and mulch and other things. If you run off of well water, well water can sometimes have a little bit of dirt or debris in it also. If this thing gets plugged up, it's gonna plug up your sprinkler head and now it's not running the way it should run. So on some kind of regular basis, you need to check these little baskets and screens. There's uh, a lot of, the the smaller sprinkler heads have a smaller screen. Take them out, clean them off, make sure everything's good to go. Those donuts, the little concrete donuts that go over sprinkler heads in your lawn need to be kept clean because especially if you have St. Augustine grass, it'll grow over the donut on top of the sprinkler head. It'll keep going. And now the head can't pop up the way it's supposed to. It gets blocked. And that sprinkler head is not going to run the way that it's supposed to and it definitely won't cover the area that it's supposed to. So you want to get them good and clean, just like this, so that they're doing their job, and that sprinkler head can pop up and water what it's supposed to water. So there's a lot of problems that might not be really obvious that can be caused by irrigation or other problems. The lawn on the left here is, has been over-irrigated and now has a root rot problem. So don't think that more water is always good. Sometimes it's bad for lawns. They can get too much water. In subdivisions with zero lot lines where the houses are very close, we have these areas between houses that number one, stay dark. So it's not ideal for growing grass. It's in a swale. So if it doesn't have good drainage, water will pile up at the kind of the base of that swale. And both of these houses have irrigation. So if the house on left, they run theirs on Monday, it waters the whole area between the houses. The person on the right, his day is Wednesday, it waters the whole area between the houses. So these areas can be notoriously wet. So you need to keep that in mind. You need to um, maybe cap off some sprinkler heads. This area, because it's shady and possibly getting double watered, it doesn't need huge amounts of water. And we've seen that kill logs before. Some other problems, a uh, picture on the left here, I believe is a disease. So there's a lot of different things that can happen to lawns. Irrigation is only one of the possible culprits. 
The lawn on the right here looks like somebody's been driving on it. So both Bahia and St. Augustine don't take foot traffic and vehicle traffic very well. If you keep driving on them, you're going to kill the grass eventually. And sprinklers are not going to fix that. The irrigation system on the left here, if your system runs and it runs to the point where you're creating little puddles and lakes, it's running for too long. You need to take a hard look at the timing, the sprinkler head. That head may be broken a couple inches underground, and now water is rushing out and causing that lake. So there's obviously a problem there that you need to take a closer look at. And for anybody who has a dog, if your dog always pees in the same spot, it can cause a dead spot in your grass. So small individual round spots like you see on the right here is probably dog pee. We always start by asking people, do you have a dog? Does your neighbor have a dog that maybe they've been walking in your yard? So there's a lot of different things that cause dead lawns and dead spots. So watering efficiently has a lot of benefits. It promotes deep roots. So you want your lawn to have nice deep roots. So when it gets a little bit drier, it's still able to get water. Watering efficiently helps reduce pests and diseases, definitely diseases. Overwatering causes root rot problems, foliar problems. People who are concerned about thatch, if you have a problem with thatch, that's normally caused by over fertilizing and over watering. And watering or trying to water late at night or as close to pre-dawn as you can, being careful that your system is done and off and complete by 8 a.m. is a really good idea because that way the sun comes up early in the morning, dries off the lawn, dries off the leaves of your plants, and you're going to have fewer disease problems. People who start the irrigation right at 6 p.m., and it ends at, I don't know, let's say nine o'clock at night. Now your entire yard sits there dripping, soaking wet all night long. That may cause and spread a lot of disease problems. So try to run it as close to pre-dawn as you possibly can. So very quickly, a little bit of information about micro irrigation. Micro is a very, very good way to save water, very healthy for plants. It's more precise. There are so many different systems now that you can find for sale at the big box stores and online. Whole systems that you hook into a, a faucet outlet outside. They have the little heads. If you have 20 potted plants or container plants in your front yard to look really good and have plants in them, you can daisy chain and run little micro irrigation heads into all of them, turn it on, Run, run it for 15 minutes, water those containers, turn it off, and now you water just your plants without watering the weeds or anything else. Very, very smart thing to do. It does, it's designed to apply water right next to the plant, so that reduces your problems with um, diseases. It's designed to have a maximum flow of 30 gallons per hour or about a half a gallon per minute, so it doesn't put out a huge amount of water. 30 gallons per hour might sound like a lot, but a, those rotor heads put out a lot more water than that because they're covering a big area. They are pretty easy to install. You can switch them out, you can move them, you can add to it, you can cap off heads very easily. They're very, very user-friendly systems, but this is different from a traditional system, which is designed to cover a big area, mostly grass area, but also covers foliage your hedges, your plants, your flowers, things like that you might have growing in your yard. And it's a combination of spray heads and rotor heads. And they put out generally three gallons a minute or more. So they put out a lot more water. So micro sprays, uh, for this to work really well, you want to try to group plants that have similar water requirements. If you start put mixing very, very drought tolerant plants, with water hungry plants, it gets really difficult to work the timing out and frequency because drought tolerant plants need a lot less water, other plants need a lot more water. So it's confusing about how many heads do I use? How often do I run it? 
How long do I run it for? Uh, works well on ground covers. You can get these little heads in every different spray pattern imaginable. There are companies that put together entire systems designed for blueberry growers. If you're growing fruit trees, they work really well. Commercial growers, especially growing any kind of tree or bush, will use micro irrigation. Works really, really well. And there's just a huge amount of uh, equipment out there that you could choose from. So bubblers, many of you might have a shrub bubbler and there's a picture of one in the bottom right hand corner there. That's not really micro irrigation. Landscapers and builders put these in at the base of a lot of times palm trees and sometimes shrubs when they first build the house and install them. And it's designed to put down a bunch of water at the base of that palm tree for it to become established. So 10 years go by, that palm tree is established. It does not need that shrub bubbler and the huge amount of water anymore. Generally, if you've had your house for really six months to a year or longer, if you have shrub bubblers that were included in your initial design, you could shut them off. And most of these things, you can either screw the cap on or it has a little set screw on top. You can turn the screw and shut that spring individual sprinkler head off. I had a house where there was a bunch of shrub bubblers. All I was doing was wasting huge amounts of water on a palm tree that didn't need it anymore because it was established. So I shut them all off. So when it comes to maintenance of um, micro irrigation, because you're using very small water lines and very small heads, they can get clogged and plugged up very easily. All it takes is a little piece of dirt to plug that head up. So clogged heads are gonna be a problem. Just need to check them on a regular basis. Um, you can get broken and split pipes. I've been told that rabbits and other animals sometimes will chew through your irrigation lines. I've never had that problem, but I, I understand that it can be a problem for some people. You always wanna be checking for leaks because micro irrigation is very water efficient, but if you have a leak, now it's not water efficient. You probably want to flush the system every couple months to keep everything clean. And if you have to get replacement parts, make sure you get the correct replacement parts to keep the whole system uh, running correctly and doing what it should be doing. So that's about all I had for today. There is my contact information. And if anybody has any questions, if you want to put them in the chat box, I will turn off the screen share. Okay, I, I allow them to be able to chat if they have any questions. Also, um, you can email me as well um, if you want to know more about the um, the rebate for getting a rain sensor. And my email is Lily B L I L L Y B at Hernando County US, and I'll be glad to give you all of the information on that. Um, you have a question from Catherine. How do I adjust the direction of the spray? That's a good question. Very easy, but you might get wet in the process. I know I always do. And it depends on what kind of sprinkler head you're trying to adjust. The big ones, the rotors, they are designed where you get a tool and on the top and you have to get directions or watch a YouTube video or a manufacturer's video on how to do this. You set the stops. So you set where it stops when it's going to the right. You set where it stops when it's going to the left. But if the head is a little bit out of adjustment and spraying a little bit on the sidewalk or driveway, like we saw in that picture, if you turn it on and it pops up correctly and you get behind it, grab it firmly and twist just a little bit, you can give it a little bit of hand adjustment. With the spray heads, if when they pop up, and they just spray, they always get out of adjustment. If you get behind them and give them a little twist to the right or to the left, you can adjust them that way. Be careful, don't get rough with them because you don't wanna be snapping them off mm -hmm. because you don't, you don't wanna be replacing snap pipes. Not difficult, but you're gonna get really dirty and probably really wet doing that. Yeah, just do it you know, on a nice hot day and it'll feel good <laughs> to get wet. 
Yeah, and, and a lot of times what happened was the spray head got bumped and now it's out of adjustment. You can give it just a little bit of a gentle twist to get it back in adjustment. And as someone from you know Hernando County Utilities, I tell people all the time, um, I've seen some horrendous bills that were associated with irrigation leaks. I'm talking thousands of dollars, um, which if you do have a leak in, in your part of Hernando County Utilities and um, it is determined it's an underground leak, you can talk to customer service about applying for an adjustment and you'll have to show proof you know, of a receipt that you had someone fix it um, or you bought the tools and you went and you know you have repaired it. You have to show that kind of proof and they will work on and adjusting your bill. You get one of those a year and they do it based on what your average bill is. And you know, there's there's a whole process involved. But I can tell you if you suspect a leak at all, especially an underground leak, if you go by a zone and it is squishy, you know, all the time having an irrigation contractor come out is going to be much more financially efficient than waiting for the bill from us so yeah because we've seen um boy every time we've gone out and looked at an irrigation system there's always something wrong with it absolutely yeah they're very difficult to keep to keep perfect yeah, but the, the worst problems are a broken pipe underground because then you could be wasting huge amounts of water and have a, a surprisingly large bill. Mm -hmm. um, improperly set run times. We've seen people who their system is set to run once a week, but it runs for 10 hours. Yes. So that's going to waste a huge amount of water. And also those broken sprinkler heads and... I, I can't reinforce enough that those those heads break so easily and you need to be out there. I, I would recommend really checking once a month, go out there and just run each zone for just a few minutes. Run out there and make sure are the heads working? Looks good, looks good, looks good. Okay, I'm gonna go on to zone two now mm -hmm. because if you do have a sprinkler, a broken head, the quicker you find that out and fix it, you know, the less water you're gonna waste. And um, I will put in the comments when we put this up on Facebook, uh, the recording thereof, uh, the um, watering schedule for Hernando County, but it's all over both of our Facebook pages. Um, also, there are, uh, there's an exemption for new sod, you know, to the watering rules. It's a 60 day exemption. But a problem we have run into is that the sod companies will tell people you've got your new sod just run each zone for an hour a day and then apply for your adjustment what do you have to say about that i see, well we've seen one or two instances where that happened and the service to put the sod in went inside and reset their spring their irrigation system when you have new sod in, you don't need to run your run every zone for one hour per day. You will use a huge amount of water and you will get a massive bill that is a general rule you're going to have to pay for. There is, do you have that? Um, do you have that digitally so that you could share at the new sod watering table? Yes, I, I, it's easier for me to mail it to you because it's easier <clears throat> to view when I send it you know, via email. But yes, we digitally have the little flyer that talks about the frequent light watering that is the rule and that is what is best for your new sod. Yeah, because your new sod, the roots are not in the soil yet. And if you remember, I mentioned that one inch of irrigation goes 12 inches mm -hmm. through sandy soil. Your roots are not 12 inches long. They're not even one inch long yet. So new side, you do have to water frequently at first, but only for literally a few minutes, just to get the surface wet. And then as your grass roots, you can water less often and less and less and less. And then before you know it, your lawn is rooted and you're back on the once a week irrigation. And if you manage your lawn properly, you cut it really, really high every time you cut it, don't over fertilize it, 
if you pick the right kind of turf grass and your yard isn't really shady, everything will work out great. You'll have a beautiful lawn. Yep. And um, I told people last week in the class I had last week that if the if you have to get a new sod and the sod company guy says, you know, just put on each zone for an hour a day, just write him his check and smile and say thank you and then come in and email me to get the, the actual schedule that you should be following, which is the best for your lawn and your wallet. And we know somebody, we tracked somebody, didn't we, Bill, who... We knew that got a new um, new sod. They had a compost product put down before um, the sod was put down, but he promised us that um, he followed our new sod watering rules to the T. So I watched his bill while he was establishing that new sod for 60 days. His bill went up about thirty forty dollars, mm -hmm. not thousands. <laughs> So, yeah, the other extreme, you do have bills for $1,000 sure. for one month of water. Yes. And that's so. usually either new sod or a leak. And for both of those things, you can get an adjustment, but remember, you get one a year. And that's only your Nando County Utilities. Yeah. So. And Catherine has a question here about what schedule do you recommend for seed planting? So oh, if man. you're trying to start a lawn from seed, you could use um, Bahia grass seed or Bermuda. Both of those are available by seed. That is really, really difficult to start, completely start a lawn from that. So you go out and you dig up everything in your lawn. You rake it nice and loose. Now your lawn is 100% bare dirt. To start a lawn from that is really difficult because if you put down grass seed, it'll come up, but tons and tons of weed seeds will come up at the same time. There's okay. almost no way that you can get a really good stand of grass without getting about 50% weeds. And then you're in the crazy cycle of trying to get rid of weeds and er what herbicide do I use? And things don't usually work out well. And it's if, your lawn, if your lawn is thin, I have a Bahia grass lawn and it's sometimes really thin and you want to get more grass out there make it a thicker lawn get a bag if you have a bahia lawn get a bag of bahia seed and during the rainy season which is starting really soon keep throwing some grass seed out there and it will sprout in the bare spots and bit by bit it will help thicken up your lawn but you do not get an exemption from lily and the uh, hernando county utilities department to run your irrigation on off days because you planted seed, correct? Well, here's how it works. And you mentioned bare dirt. So if you um, take your lawn down to nothing, but bare dirt, no weeds, no nothing, and, and put the seed down, then you do qualify for that same, you know, new lawn exemption to try and water that in. But as you said, we would not recommend that because you're gonna end up with a highly weed infested lawn. Very, very, very difficult to do. Yes. If you are overseeding, just throwing that seed over your existing lawn to try and thicken it up, which I have done, but I've, as Bill said, I waited till the rainy season. It does not qualify for any extra watering. Now, if you have bare spots, small bare spots that you either want to plug or try to seed, you don't get to put on that zones irrigation system unless it's 50% or more, and again, down to bare dirt. So if you have a small bare spot, we call that a hot spot. And what you are allowed to do to water that in is you with a hose in your hand, um, self-canceling nozzle hose, or what we call a targeted, another, that's one targeted means. Another targeted means would be Remember the old fashioned hose and sprinkler? Put yep. one of those on, but it ha put it on very low. So it's only watering that spot. And um, you're allowed to do that, but you're still gonna have to do that um, after six or before eight. So. Catherine, if you do, if you are in a situation where you've completely cleared the lawn out down to bare dirt and you put down either Bahia or Bermuda seed, 
um, it has to be kept moist for the grass seed to germinate. So all, that, all you have to do is go out either with a garden hose or your in-ground irrigation system. I have no idea how large of an area you're doing and water it literally for just a few minutes to keep the surface moist for the grass seed to germinate. The moister you keep it, the better it's gonna germinate. So if you're doing it by hand, you may have to go out there a couple times a day and just lightly spray it just to try to keep it moist and you're gonna get better germination that way. Mm -hmm. But you get a lot of weeds, a lot of weeds. Same thing goes for new plantings uh, that as non lawn um, material in order for you to allow be allowed to put your that zone irrigation zone on your new planting material it has to be over more than 50 percent of the zone if you have just planted four new shrubs then the hand watering with the hose um, even a soaker hose is allowed to be put on but again during the allowable watering hours but you are allowed more than once a week while that gets established about 60 days Yep, soaker hoses, that's something we didn't mention. They work very well. Mm -hmm. You want to be careful with those, though, because people think they're only using a little. <laughs> and a soaker hose, if you forget about it, you'll end up Set using the timer. More. Yes, exactly. Set a timer. Otherwise, you'll turn it on and you'll forget to turn it off. And now you have a big water bill. Yes. And when they say soaker hose, they mean the kind that drip, not the kind that shoots out sprays. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, well, thank you very, very much. I think that was very informative. It, it's not an exciting <laughs> topic, but it's a very important topic for those, um, you know, who want to water efficiently, you know, and want to use their irrigation system. Neither, neither Dr. Lester nor I use an irrigation system, but we know there are plenty of people out there who do, and we want you to use it in the most efficient manner for our water and for your wallet. So thank you, Dr. Lester, and thank you, everyone. And we will see you next Wednesday. Is that the first already? I think. Well, I have a class coming <laughs> next Wednesday. I think it is the first. And um, if it is the first, that's going to be on a pollinator plant starter kit. Talk about maybe 10 um, plants that will help you, you know, get started easily in a pollinator garden. So thank you, everyone, and we'll see you next week. Hey, oh, thank and you. tomorrow, if you join Dr. Lester and I for the virtual plant clinic, Buddy will be there. And, and um, that's at 10 o'clock and look at um, Hernando Extensions Facebook page for the link to hop on that. And that's when people get to ask us questions without any prior warning. And we get to make, a, I mean, tell you <laughs> the answers right there at the plant clinic. We'll have to play Stump Lily on the virtual plant clinic. There we go. <laughs> Stump Lily, she'll just ask Bill. Right. Thank you everyone and have a great day. Thank you, bye.